Hello, and welcome to my creepy little corner of the internet where I talk about true crime stories. My name is Lane, and if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video. So, today we're going to be talking about another serial killer, and this serial killer's name is Anton Tony Costa, aka the Cape Cod Vampire. So, some of you might have heard of this person um, under a different name. Um, another popular name that he's known for is the Cape Cod Casanova, because um, apparently he's a pretty good looking guy. I think he looks like Gerardo Rivera, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> you'll see later on in this video what I'm talking about in terms of just like a few photos where I'm just like, Geraldo, is that you? But obviously it's not. So anyways, um, let me just stop rambling and let's get into the story of the Cape Cod Vampire. So Anton Tony Costa, um, we're just gonna call him Tony because it's just a lot to say. So he's just gonna go by Tony for this story. So Tony was born on August 2nd. 1944 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, so he's another Leo that was completely unintentional. It just happened to work out that way. <laughs> um, so yeah. And his father died um, really early on in his life um, in World War II, where apparently he actually drowned trying to save um, some of his fellow like uh, crew members because he was um, in the Navy and uh, something happened. Uh oh, World War II happened and he got shipped out. His father died when he was just a baby. So technically Tony never met his dad, but when he was seven years old, he said he began um, complaining to his mother that he, a figure was coming into his room at night and that Tony swore up, down, left, right, sideways that it was his dead father. I just don't know what I would say to my child if it was like, hey mom, like, dad's coming to visit me, the ghost, da da da. I'd be like, we're getting you some therapy, babes. Like, I am so sorry. Let me just work better out myself. So Tony was allegedly assaulted by an older teenage boy when he was just 12 years old. Um, but it was never like reported or anything like that because this was, you know, in the 50s and you probably didn't talk about that type of stuff. You just kind of like ignored it uh, because, you know, trauma it was never reported, but in my personal opinion, not that I'm a professional, um, but I really feel like this goes on to affect him later. Um, and maybe one of the reasons why it all went down the way it went down. He started showing signs of sociopathy very early on in his teenage years and around November, November of 1961, um, he apparently had snuck in to the room of a neighbor girl who was around the age of 13 or 14, I believe, so very young. He was about 16 at this time, and he stood over her bed like a freaking creeper and you know she woke up and saw him and screamed like any sane normal person would and this scared him and he ran off well it wasn't um very long after three days after mind you um that he returned to this girl's um apartment and broke in and 
this time attempted to kidnap her and take her down, drag her down into the basement. But luckily, uh, luckily for her, um, neighbors like heard what was happening and stopped him and called the police and he was arrested. On January 4th, 1962, uh, Tony, who was 17 at the time, uh, was convicted of burglary and assault. So the judge decided that instead of throwing Tony in jail, that they were just going to give him probation and pretty much tell him just to get the out of town. Like, yeah. So that is inevitably how he ended up in Provincetown. Um, and this is where he would start to display like some really... Uh, you know, even more <laughs> dare is even more than, you know, breaking into a teenage girl's room and trying to like kidnap her isn't extreme enough, but he would start to display more like very um, odd behaviors. So during this time, um, not only being a weird, creepy person um, as just a teenager, uh, Tony was also into taxidermy, um, and he was known for picking up roadkill he found around the town, alongside roads, um, but weirdly enough, a lot of people's pet cats started disappearing um, when Tony kind of moved into the area from its town, and obviously, like, this isn't, like, something that's really gonna draw like authorities attention to be like hey arrested for something else but it definitely caught some other people's eye and kind of just put him on the radar as being a weirdo because uh that's 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 what he is he's a weirdo and not in a good way like in a so gross creepy kind of way another thing that happened during all of this time was Tony started a relationship with a 13 year old girl after moving to Provincetown. So when he was about 17, she was about 13. Um, they started talking and within a year they got married. So they were married. He was 18 and she was 14. Still gross, just gross. It never stops getting gross, okay? So this was in April of 1963. Costa and his wife, Tony and his wife, uh, get married. Um, and they actually ended up having three children together. But Tony being a sociopath and um, honestly a, a narcissist as well, like, let's be real, um, it was a very abusive relationship and not only did he abuse his wife, but he also abused his ch abused, you guys can't talk, abused his children as well. Um, he even sexually, um, assaulted his wife constantly, essentially, but, you know, and this time that wasn't considered um, anything taboo or out of the ordinary because it, you're married and, and you know, you're, you're kind of just out of your wits, but you're just, you're just kind of fucked, essentially. You know, it's... <sighs> I'm just so glad times are changing a little bit. Just, I feel like I take it all back. Times aren't changing, they're just kind of going backwards. So in June of 1966, um, Tony brought home two hippie girls named Bonnie and Diane and announced that he was going to be driving them to Pennsylvania and then eventually moving on from Pennsylvania to California. So Tony ended up telling the police that he drove the girls to Hayward, California, dropped them off and that was the last he ever saw of them. But that was the last anyone ever saw. Like, the last time anyone saw these two girls was with Tony. So, police couldn't necessarily prove that he had something to do with the disappearance. But it just seems very suspicious. 
that he was supposed to be taking them to one destination and then all of a sudden they went to a different destination and then they just disappear. Tony was hiking in the woods with a female friend who is never named and finding information about who this female friend is, it's, it's just, it doesn't have, like, it, there's nothing out there on this person. I tried to find it. I couldn't figure out a name or anything, just that she was a female acquaintance of Tony. And in August of 1967, Tony had taken her on a little hike in the woods of Truro. I'm going to mess that up. But it kind of sounds like churro, so I'm hoping that's going to keep me on track. Anyways, went to the Truro Woods with this female friend. And this guy shoots her with a bow and arrow. Thankfully, thankfully, she doesn't die. Um, and he, like, apologized, like, so much like oh man i'm so sorry i don't know what happened i just went off oh man i'm so sorry and nothing came of it like no charges were pressed like nothing happened he didn't get arrested she didn't go to the police it was just kind of like oh, okay sorry but like man could you imagine like if that arrow would have killed her Ugh. she would have been out in the churro woods and no one would have been able to find her in early 1968, Tony's marriage to his wife, Avis, kind of was at this point just done. Shambles. He was an abusive, trash person who was just up and leave randomly for long periods of time and just leave her to take care of like their three children all on her own. Mind you, she started having his children probably when she was like 14 or 15 year old. So she's still a teenager raising these children. How sad and what a trash person he is, right? Obviously, we're only going to figure out how more of a trash person is as we keep going along. So after his marriage kind of fell apart, uh, Tony's... Um, Tony's right idea was to pack up and move on out to good old sunny California. Why does everyone come out to California? Like, what is this? Like, this is why California was like the murder capital of the world in like the 60s and 70s and 80s too. For a long time, like, like forever, you know? And it's just because people come out here and they're just like, Let's start a new California. Murder some people. What the fuck? The beginning of January, separated from from his wife. Into January, packed up, moved out to California, um, and he settled in um, an area of San Francisco called Ashbury Heights, and here he found a girlfriend um and her name was Barbara and so the thing about Barbara was she had um um a child from a previous relationship and when you know Tony came into her life she just kind of fell head over heels for the sky and when he decided that he was done with California and wanted to go back to Massachusetts, she was like, I gotta go with this guy. He's a catch. I can't lose this. I'm going. So thankfully, but like sadly, she leaves her child with her parents in California and leaves with Tony back to Massachusetts. And she just disappears never makes it to massachusetts with tony and this is believed to be his third victim two hippie girls disappear now barbara has disappeared so on may 17th tony was working at a doctor's office doing like handyman work because that's what he was a carpenter at this time, not a taxidermist like you would think. 
that was just a hobby. His profession was a carpenter, like handyman kind of person. So he would just do odd jobs around town for people and businesses. And he was working at this doctor's office doing, I don't even know what, who cares, does it matter? No, it doesn't. He was working there and apparently, um, he ended up stealing about $5,000 worth of medicine and surgical equipment. Remember this later. So obviously now we can kind of figure out that um, Tony is probably has a little bit of a drug problem. No, not a little bit. He loves drugs. Tony loves drugs. And the company they liked to keep um, were people younger than him, like teenagers, people early, 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 early 20s, like very younger than him, easy to manipulate, people that would assume that he was so freaking cool because Tony had a garden. Yes, a green garden, a cannabis garden in the Turo woods. And that actually is why he was walking in the woods with that female acquaintance that he shot with the bow and arrow because he was going to go show her his magical weed garden. So he grew and sold weed. And this is another reason why the teenagers thought he was so freaking cool and wanted to be his friend. So in August, the divorce between Tony and Avis was finalized um, and then um, in mid-September he was arrested because he's an idiot and he thinks he's so smart and he's so cool and can do whatever he wants uh, because he's a narcissist and you know that's what narcissists do they just kind of think they're like untouchable Ugh. raise your hand if you've known some narcissists I worked with one not fun. So Tony got um, arrested in mid-September because ba -ba -ba -ba, he failed to make child support payments to his ex-wife to take care of their three children that he essentially has never been around to take care of since ever. Just around to smack him around. That's all it was. He was arrested um, and held in custody till about beginning of November. And after he was released, he started dating this woman named Susan. And if you can just kind of take a guess, poor old Susan disappeared within like a week of the two of them like moving in together, like their relationship went super fast. And they moved in together and then she just kind of disappeared. And then he ended up telling everyone um, that she had left to Mexico. And he didn't know what, why, or whatever, but that was the last time he had talked to her, she was leaving to Mexico. and He had never seen her ever again. So shortly after all of this, and Susan goes missing, uh, Tony decides he wants to go hang out in New York for a little while. Um, and he begins, um, hanging out with a woman named Christine, and Christine also, like Tony, loves to do drugs. So their whole connection was they did drugs together. Um, until one day, uh, Christine was found dead in her bathtub from a supposed overdose except for like the way that she was found in the tub like really was very suspicious like it seemed more like maybe some a little bit of foul play might have been involved like it didn't seem like it seemed like a drowning not a, like an overdose but i guess if you're in the tub and you overdose you probably would drown. they said she overdosed in her tub after hanging out with tony and so that was pretty um, suspicious. Um, that also happened around the end of November, November 23rd. Oh, November 23rd is a few days before Thanksgiving. 
Oh, how sad for her. Um, and also, probably one of the reasons why um, Tony kind of dipped out to New York for a little while is because some other gals in good little Provincetown had gone missing. Um, one of them was a local girl named Sydney, um, and she was known as a free spirit, and during this time it was, like, also the hippie movement, so a lot of, like, teenagers would just leave. Like, they would just leave and go, and, like, their parents, like, you know, it was a common thing. So, their parents didn't really think much of her disappearing, um until months and months later when they just didn't hear anything from her and thought that was very weird because she was close to her family. She didn't have any like bad blood with her family. So why wouldn't she just like call in to check and, and update them on where she was? So that was like a talk around town um, that maybe something happened with her. Also, two other girls who were friends that were visiting Provincetown just on vacation. One of them was a school teacher, um, and the other one was her best friend, um, named Patricia and Marianne. And the thing about these two is that they were seen, um, in the company of Tony. And I guess um, Tony was staying in the same rental house, uh, at, that these two girls rented a room out. Um, so there was a lady in Provincetown. Was it a lady? There was a person. There was a person in Provincetown that had converted, like, their house into kind of like a, not a bed and breakfast type of deal, but, like, you can go rent vacation, like for a vacation and rent a room in this place. You know, that type of thing. Well, these two friends rented a room in this house from this person. And apparently Tony at this exact time was also renting a room in this same house from the person. So they met. And obviously they disappeared shortly after last being seen with Tony. Um, I believe that the last time anyone saw them, like Tony was actually seen in um, their car with them. So Tony was up in New York, just kind of hanging out, doing large amounts of drugs. When he hears that police um, are interested in talking to him because they had heard that he was the last person that was seen with these two missing girls, and so they wanted to talk to him. So Tony, thinking he's just, like, the smartest guy in the world and he can outsmart everyone, spoiler alert, decides that he's gonna go back to Provincetown and clear his name and explain, like, the whole situation to police um and then you know everything would be fine like they wouldn't be interested in him they'd be able to explain it all away and then you know that would be it fine well police being not idiots uh already kind of feel that like he's bullshitting them um, you know, he presented them with a, uh, title to the car because he claims that he drove the girls to Canada because one of them needed an abortion and that when they got to Canada, they like sold the, their car to Tony because they weren't going to be needing it. And so he presented them with like this really like sketchy, dumb, lame title that like was clearly not real, obviously. Um, and 
apparently he had taken the car to a local mechanic and was asking about the price of like repainting this car and um you know <laughs> just super suspicious stuff like I don't know what this guy was like thinking like uh what an idiot but anyways so he's there and he's just kind of like trying to like play off this whole thing and police aren't buying it so um, police throw a curveball at Tony and they say okay if you dropped these girls off at Canada like you say you did why don't you tell them to get in contact with us so that we know you know you're telling the truth and that they're fine like you say they are <laughs> Conveniently, like two weeks later, um, a letter arrives at Tony's mother's house saying, um, well, apparently claiming to be from these two girls, um, asking Tony, what happened? Thought you were supposed to meet us in Canada, but we'll just continue on with our plan of meeting in New York, blah, blah, something like that pretty sure that's almost exactly what it said but you know police being not idiots um were able to track where this letter originated from and it didn't come from canada it actually just came from new york so this idiot sent a letter to his mother's house supposedly written by these two girls and he sent it from New York like they weren't gonna find out so around the time that the two friends went missing um, February of 1969 police found the mutilated body um, of Susan the girlfriend well okay one of the girlfriends of Tony that went missing, um, the one that he moved in with, and then like a week later, she just like disappeared, like right after his divorce. Yes, yes. So they found her body in the old Turo Cemetery. Now, if you remember, the Turo Woods were, was the place where Tony had his green garden, um, and also shot that random friend with a female friend with a bow and arrow so they find Susan Perry's body buried there and her body had been cut into eight pieces because Tony is a weirdo who's into taxidermy right right so yeah so we cut not only murdered her but chopped her up as well so on March 4th of 1969 the dismembered bodies of Patricia and Marianne um, were found buried together a mile and a half from the first gravesite, which was Susan's gravesite. And I also found the body of Sydney, uh, the local girl that had gone missing that everyone kind of thought she just ran off to live like the crazy hippie lifestyle. No, she didn't run off anywhere. She was murdered by Tony, and he dumped her body in the same grave where the two friends, Patricia and Marianne's bodies, were also dumped. A 22 caliber pistol was found also um, near the grave sites that was later identified to belong to Tony. Not looking good, Tony. So Patricia was um, apparently shot in the neck where Marianne was shot in the head. And then Patricia was also shot in the head as well. So in the neck and the head, and then Marianne was shot in the head. So the thing that was kind of weird was that Marianne's head and torso were found in a different location um, than the rest of her body, which was found with Patricia and Susan in 
one grade. So because uh, Tony was into taxidermy, he did <sighs> do stuff to the bodies, like <sighs> remove organs from one place, put them in other places, move stuff around. Um, it's also said that some uh, parts of the bodies and some organs um, bore teeth marks, which is how he gets the nickname the Cape Cod Vampire. And it was also proven that um, necrophilia was performed on the victims. So, yeah. Like, what is up with that? Like, why does. I understand but like it's never like I'm never just like oh yeah I'm not girlfriendly I'm school like I'm always just like but why every time even though like I understand like, why but I'll never understand why because these bodies were found essentially in his garden or near his garden and the weapon found was also um, connected to him, uh, police are like, well, it's obviously this guy. <sighs> so Tony was arrested when the burial site was discovered to be his green garden. He was also in possession of um, Marianne's car, which he faked the title for and clearly tried to like cover up by trying to get it repainted and disguise it obviously um the thing about tony is narcissist and he just thought he was just so much smarter than everyone else and that he could just like talk his way out of it um you know he changed his story multiple times he failed polygraph tests he even tried to like blame other people that he knew um, and saying that they were the ones that did this, not him. But obviously police knew that he was like full of it and didn't believe anything he was saying. He finally did end up confessing to killing Marianne on July 12th. So after Tony was arrested um, in March, like the end of March, he was given a psych psychiatric evaluation because that's what they all do uh, for most people that murder people, you know? He was diagnosed with schizof... schiz... <sighs> schizoid personality disorder. I can talk, I promise I can talk. Just big multiple solo words are kind of a challenge for me sometimes, I'm sorry. And on another examination in June, um, they pretty much declared him a sexually dangerous man capable of murder which duh duh obviously he proved that by the victims and then getting caught and then lying about it like we know that like let's tell us something new doctors so his trial began on may 6th of 1970 um and his lawyers attempted to plead insanity um but Costa uh, was just uh, too good for that. And his lawyers tried to plead insanity by saying that it was all of the extensive drug use that he was doing that caused him to uh, act this way and commit these crimes. But then Costa being a self-absorbed D-bag um, decided that he wanted to give a speech or say something and pretty much by him doing that it proved that he was pretty sane he wasn't insane at all he was very much sane and so his whole defense team's like insanity plea of like the, doing the drugs or whatever like was just completely like trashed like ugh, what an idiot you know what I mean so he ended up getting convicted of four counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison on May 29th. Um, 
he began like filling his cell with like books on like Satanism and ritual magic and occult stuff and blah 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 and I hate when people use that stuff uh, as like an excuse because it's not an excuse like just because you believe in certain things or you think certain things are cool is not those things aren't the reasoning behind anything people make the choices on their own because they have problems like he clearly had problems right <sighs> but yeah anyways so he started doing that and reading all those weird like those books and like everyone was like oh my god it's so creepy mm, whatever whatever and um four years later in may of 1974 Tony Costa was found hanging in his prison cell very much dead so he had a leather belt around his neck and they were like this fool just committed suicide which you know what good riddance um, but one of the other things that was very interesting is during this time where he was in prison before he killed himself he started writing a book about the murders so i guess it would be uh, a factual novel is what they call it so essentially it's like his retelling of like what happened um but in this case there's this character or this person or this friend named carl which he claims is actually the person that like murdered these girls and it wasn't actually him like but he was just kind of like pulled into the situation and he wasn't responsible for their deaths it was this carl character which whatever dude carl doesn't exist we all know this okay like your last ditch effort to like prove your innocence it just it's so stupid. So stupid. <sighs> Anton Tony Costa was a terrible person. He targeted seemingly random women um, who were drawn in by like his good lurk, good lurks, drawn in by his good looks and charm. And that would inevitably be their downfall. Um, a lot of these people were his girlfriends or, you know, friends that he would hang out with and participate in large copious amounts of drugs. Um, and then, you know, he would shoot them in the head and then dismember their bodies and bury them in graves. Um, and like have sex with their bodies after he did all this to them and it's just like <sighs> why we gotta do that why we gotta why do we even have to do the whole sex part thing like I just don't I don't get it I'll never get it but I will forever be fascinated by it I can tell you that uh Tony Costa he was weird um and man you know I just feel bad for his wife you know that poor that poor girl just got like groomed and manipulated and then got stuck with like this guy's like murderous man's like children and uh, she's a real victim here you know anyways thanks for watching this video and for watching my previous video about the claremont killer that was an intense one to get through as well um so was this one honestly very weird um, I hope to keep doing these videos for you. I'm pretty obsessed with true crime, particularly serial killers. I eventually want to start doing some cult related things too because cults are super fascinating uh, as well. Um, so if you want to stay tuned, I'm going to hopefully try to get onto a more serious uh, posting schedule. Still trying to get into the hang of all of this. So doing like this whole like once a month thing um I also work full-time so it's it's a lot for me to like do all this research film and then edit it just takes me a lot 
longer to get through it because I'm working like a 42 hour work week job on top of doing this. So just bear with me. I'm not trying to not get content out. I just, just takes me a little bit. So remember, subscribe, like, notifications if you really want to get crazy with it. Um, I plan to upload on Tuesdays. Right now, I think I'm doing a <sighs> once every two to three weeks upload. I hope to make that once every two weeks if I can start getting in the flow of this a little bit better. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. And I will catch you on the next true crime video. Thank you. Mwah. Be safe. Thank <laughs> you.